So I'm going to do a insulation resistance test on a three phase board. And um, as before, we've removed any loads that might actually affect any of the readings that we're going to get. And also, I've isolated the motor here uh, because we only want to test the wiring. And if you wanted to test the motor, we would do that locally. So just for the purposes of the demonstration, the isolator's off, so the insulation resistance test will actually end just there. There are a couple of methods of testing insulation resistance on a three-phase board where you would test the top of the switch with all the breakers on and test the whole installation in one go. However, we're actually going to demonstrate the procedure involved when we actually test each circuit individually. So, as before, we need to make sure the meter's set up correctly. We're going to be using 500 volts again, and it's very important to make sure that we do the open and closed circuit test. So, if I put the two probes together, then the meter, if it's set up correctly, should give me a dead short. So, let's try that. And it has, so it's coming up with zero, which means it's a dead short, and also a red light on. And if I take the probes apart, it should read infinite resistance, which it does. So on the Martindale, it actually says greater than 999 million ohms. That's off scale height, in other words, it's saying I can't actually measure that. So I'm going to pop the shrouds back on just for safety, as we are going to be using at 500 volts. And just to reiterate what the regs actually say, we're allowed a maximum of one mega ohm, and uh, we're obviously hoping to get above that, but um, anything above one mega ohm is a pass. However, if it does approach that, let's say you were doing a periodic, it may well be noteworthy, and also just wanted to emphasize that um, we're not actually just looking for off-scale high all the time, we're actually going to write down exactly what the meter says. So, as in the previous demonstration, there's, there's no set way of doing uh, an insulation resistance test. You just need to test between lives and live to earth. So as long as you have a fairly rigorous procedure just to make sure that you don't actually forget anything. Uh, so my suggestion is to test the lives between the three-phase breakers first and then do the rest of the board. So I'll just demonstrate that now. So all the breakers are off. testing L1 to L2 and that comes up with greater than 999 or off scale high. Testing L1 to L3 that's the same and then L2 to L3 I then go across to the other outlet and do exactly the same L1 to L2, or L3 to L2, doesn't really matter. But. So again, I'm looking for greater than one mega ohm, and that's reading off scale high, so that's a pass. So I'm now going L2 to L3, and yet again, that's a pass. So that's all the free phrase breakers done. And I've done those first because they're actually unique. And now um, we're really now testing the board single phase. So <clears throat> my suggestion would be to start off testing neutral to everything that's got a neutral. Bearing in mind our motor has a balanced three phase, so it doesn't have a neutral. So there's no need particularly to do that test. And also, just for clarity, I've actually removed the neutral bars just so you can get a view of the actual um, neutral bars themselves. <clears throat> the neutral shroud, I should say. So I start off with the green probe on the neutral, and I'm now going to test neutral to line. So yet again, I'm getting greater than 999 million ohms, so that's a good pass. And also to reiterate that if I got, say, 750 mega ohms, I would still write that down. It's very important to make sure you record what the meter actually says. 
Now, I'm not actually going to test between neutral and this outlet here, because, as I said, the motor doesn't have a neutral. So we just need to go to the next circuit involved. And that's a, a clear pass. And lastly, that's also a pass. And so I can now drop down onto the earth bar and work my way back around the circuit. So I'm now testing earth to line. That's OK. Um, this is my two-way lighting switch, so I will have to operate the other, bring the other strapper in by operating the, uh, the two switches. So I'll just do that quickly and repeat the test. And it's only repeated between earth and line because we don't have any neutrals at the switches. This time the motor has an earth, so I'm going to test it. That's a pass. Now I'm going to test earth to L1 of the socket. So all of them so far have been greater than 999 million ohms, which is off scale high on this particular meter. So there's just two more circuits left to go. I find if you work around uh, in this uh, fashion, then it's very, makes it much easier to, to do it without forgetting anything in the heat of the moment. So that's earth to all the lines. I now just need to go earth to neutral just to finish the test off. So I'm going to go to earth to neutral and Initially, I actually get a failure. It's actually telling me that between earth and neutral, I've got a dead short. Well, I happen to know that because this is a, a PME system, then what we're actually doing at the moment is just measuring the impedance of the PME link. So this is a situation where you'd actually remove the neutral. Remember that on single phase boards, we're very used to the uh, isolator actually disconnecting the neutral on the three phase board it's just um, the neutral is bolted up to uh, this part here which goes on to both neutral bars so now that I've disconnected the incoming neutral that should isolate the PME link so if I repeat the test as you can see that now passes because we've actually removed the PME link so again, very important to remember that uh, any loads vulnerable to the test do need to be removed, any bathroom fans or any smoke detectors. But uh, that was a uh, test on the free phase board. I'll just finish off by reinstating that neutral and that will complete the test. Thank you.